Hello again, Patrick here. Uh, today we got some really cool stuff we're going to go over. Um, we're going to be taking a look at the uh, web API for audio. See now we can apply that to a 3JS environment. All right, so uh, first thing, let's get started. I'm actually going to demo sort of what we're going to be creating. So I'm going to go ahead, go over to my uh, local host. I'm going to go into the WebGL thing. And that's going to actually bring up this video that we're going to be making. Uh, this is actually surprisingly easy to make. Uh, there's not a whole lot of moving parts with it per se. Uh, what we're going to be basically having to do is bring in the audio information uh, from an MP3. And after we've brought that in, we're going to use that information, the frequency information, to actually render out this whole entire scene. Alright, so I'm going to stop this for now and go into the actual code so we can take a look at it. All right, so here's our basic loader. I've been using reusing the same index file for everything, so this has gotten a little bit out of hand. We can clearly remove a lot of these these elements uh, that we don't really need right now, but we'll just leave them in for now. Uh, the one thing to be aware of is that you're going to have to add in into your body tag this audio um, to find as my audio is going to be the ID or whatever you want to ID it as, uh, and then the source of that audio file. In this case, if you notice, I've switched over to brackets. I'm not using the uh, Notepad++ anymore. Uh, so if you're not familiar with this interface, uh, I'd suggest taking a look at it. It's made by Adobe. It's not bad. It definitely does the job. All right, so our file right here, I have two, two in here. I have a shade and a yo. Uh, I could clearly change this up to the other MP3, uh, which is another, another MP3 that I was testing, a local artist named Normaline from Baltimore. Um, <clears throat> okay, so again, we have our WebGL container and our audio source container. Um, so that's going to basically load up those things and give us access to it within the JavaScript file that we're going to be editing. Here's our working file right here, main. We'll just hop right over onto here. And we'll take a look. We're using, again, jQuery to uh, say assign on document load. And then after that, we're going to initialize all the, the information that we need. Uh, if, in order for this to work. All right, so uh, the very first thing is we're setting up the context, which is the new audio context, so var ctx. And then we're going to assign an audio file, which is that get element by um, ID audio, then our audio source that we're going to be loading in, which is going to be the audio, and then our analyzer. So we're setting up a context that is basically going to create the, the analyzer, which is basically what the analyzer is going to allow us to do is it's going to allow us to take a look at all the frequency data and eventually put that into an array, uh, which is what you're seeing right here. Okay, so we're going to connect everything together. Um, audio source connect and then oh, as well as the destination. And then basically we're going to create this array right here called frequency data. And that's going to contain all the information in here. So if we went ahead and logged out this frequency data into the console, we'll take a look at that by doing under render, we'll just add some information in there. All right, now we can actually take a look at that array. So I'm going to go ahead and save that. And we'll refresh on this. Oops. All right, now let's go into the console, take a look at this. Oh, that didn't work at all. What am I missing? This renders once. Let me try something. Let's put it right here. There we go. Okay. Uh, so what you're seeing right here is all of the frequency data. Basically what this is going to do is create an, an array of 1,024 um, spots and each of those is going to have a frequency data um, point that goes from 0 to 255 depending on the audio that's playing. Alright, so now you can take a look at that. <clears throat> Alright, so after you've done that, what we're going to do is we're going to need that information. We're going to need to utilize that information in some way. So we've gone ahead and we've created the array that contains all that information. 
let's just go ahead and see how we can use it. Uh, in this circumstance, oh, uh, one thing to remember is that when you do set this thing up, you do have to do audio play. Otherwise, it'll start, it'll do everything. The audio just won't play. It won't be, it'll confuse you a little bit. Um, what we're going to do now is basically use this to kind of create a scene. Uh, and in order to make the scene a little bit dynamic, I, I took a couple elements that we've already looked at. Um, and those being the changing the color, um, ch moving the camera, um, as well as affecting the rotation of it, and all of those different elements. So to start, what I did was I created a basic uh, array of a cube. And I basically said that, you know, create a whole bunch of these cubes. And we're, I was building upon the, the add and the subtract function. So basically what we said was build a whole bunch of these cubes. Um, and we're gonna do, I'm gonna do a thousand of them. I wanted it to be even. If I matched it up to the array itself, it would be a thousand twenty-four. So the cube wouldn't be perfectly cubish. Uh, so this way, what I did was I basically matched it up um, just to be a thousand by uh, or a, a ten by ten by ten cube. So we have just basically all those different elements in it. Okay. So we have that cube. It creates a cube. It sets all the positions of them and kind of defines them into the space. So now we have a whole bunch of these different cubes. What we can do is we can assign it a uh, each of those cubes a, a color value um, according to the position of its uh, frequency data array. So all the way up from, it should technically go from 1024. Um, it, it, we only went up to 1000 on it, but each one now has its own color that's associated with it, that's associated to that frequency. So all we're doing is just essentially multiplying that 0 to 255 fr frequency um, by this color, and we'll animate it the same way. So essentially what happens is, is that as the frequency changes, it goes up from 0 to 250 goes from 0 to 255, it's going to multiply by that red value right there. So you're going to get a whole range of different colors. Uh, I've made it so that it only worked on the red value because I noticed if you went with any of the others, you try to make it more complex, then it was a little bit hard to see what was going on. Uh, sort of like all you're doing is affecting one slider as opposed to affecting three where you'll have multiple different colors um, and it's a little bit more difficult to to actually get the visual effect that you're going for with that. Okay, so that's the that's the first one that we've affected. The next one that we're going to be taking a look at, well, I'm going to zoom down a little bit. Most of this stuff is going to be happening in our render function. So essentially what we're going to be doing is traversing the scene and affecting all that the, those values. First one being the, the X, Y, and Z, um, or I'm sorry, just the X and the Y positions on uh, all of our instances, and it's going to, again, go down, and it's going to manipulate them. Um, in this case, it's going to take the instance of the ID number, divide that by 50. In this case, it's to taking the frequency data and dividing that by 1,000. We're simply doing that just because otherwise everything just is going to move way, 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 way too quickly. So we need to reduce the speed of them. We need like a very small number. But in this case, we're taking the frequency uh, 50 spot as opposed to the instance ID position of that one, uh, just so that they're all consistently moving, uh, as opposed to the Y where they're not all going to be consistently moving. So anytime that I'm picking an arbitrary number and sticking in there, it's because I want everything to consistently move at the same rate. Uh, but I do want it to move along to the music. So I'm picking an arbitrary value or frequency within that web context uh, array, and it's going to be affected by that. So that's one of the reasons I'm doing that. All right, so, and again, we're, we're just modifying the colors. This is how we're, we're going to go about it, okay? So we're going to call the, the child material color set RGB, and then just specify that it's frequency data, um, divided by 255 and that's going to give us our our red color and allow us to kind of change through it Okay All right, then we have our, our default things now one of the other things that I did in order to Make this a little bit more dynamic was I wanted the camera to kind of jump around a little bit uh, So I decided the best way to go about doing that would be to use the frequency data to control the field of view uh, and also the zoom on the camera itself. 
uh, without getting into too much detail on that. Essentially what this is going to do is affect the zoom in such a way that it redefines the distance at which it can zoom uh, according to the frequency that it's on. So basically at a higher frequency it's going to allow a longer zoom and a lower frequency at a lower value it's going to um, allow a, a shortened zoom on it. So it's going to basically rubber band between defined spots on, on the actual zoom itself. Okay, so that's how that works. And then rotation, simply all we're doing right here is just adding some uh, dynamic values that are de determined by the, uh, by the frequency data to affect the rotation. So it's pretty straightforward what's going on here. It's just basically, you know, it's going to rotate these different directions and stuff. It's going to rotate these different amounts according to how it's defined by that actual uh, analysis of the of the audio file so again this is really really straightforward what all we're doing simply is pull is getting this context data right up top here uh, and sticking it into a into an array and that's going to enable us to really have fun and just start using that those array values to really affect everything so alright so without further ado I'm gonna hop back over here and why don't we have a little bit of fun and kind of change the audio up on this one to the other mp3 and we'll see how that affects things. Let's go ahead hit save on that. And you can see how that changes up the video. All right, so that's it for this tutorial. Uh, again, in the future, we're probably going to be looking at some shaders, some other more compli complicated stuff, see more, some more awesome things that we can do with all this, this these different WebGL applications. Uh, thanks for thanks again for turning tuning in, and don't forget to subscribe.